and welcome back to my channel. My name is Abby and I'm the maker and the designer behind Sew so Homey. I'm a self-taught crocheter and knitter. I have been crocheting for over 10 years now and I've been knitting for a lot less but I've definitely picked it up a lot more within the past two years. I've expanded my knitting knowledge significantly and if you've watched any of my podcast episodes before you will know that I love to knit socks. But I am branching out this year into other uh, types of designs, so I'll be sharing a little bit about that in this episode. It has been a long time, so I do have a lot of ground to cover, but I hope that it is of interest to you because I really enjoy sharing my knitting and crochet experiences. I hope you have a project that you're working on and please make yourself cozy because I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I do have a design that I'd like to talk about, uh, self-design. I also am working on some projects by other designers. And I also did have the urge to buy a lot of new yarn. Uh, some of it was gifted to me. Most of it I purchased myself, but I have quite a few acquisitions as well. So I hope that you stay tuned for this episode of the Soho Me podcast. We're gonna start <laughs> with the finished object, which is the one and only of this video, and it is the sweater that I'm wearing. And it's gonna be a little bit difficult to show you because this space is very small, but I'll do my best to give you a little peek of what it looks like. So you can see there's a little bit of color work in it. There's a sleeve detail for you. Turn around. So you can kind of see what it looks like. But this sweater is called the basket sweater and that's actually not, I guess it's intended name. Uh, that's just what it came out as. I gained access to this pattern via a test knit and she called it, or sorry, it's a pattern by Fiber Tales or at least that's her handle name. I think her name is Lark. Or I have problems pronouncing that name, but uh, she runs the Fiber Tales podcast and she has a lot of other pattern designs out there. And yeah, definitely go give her a look. The title of the pattern is called Basket Sweater, but she said that that's not really what she wanted to end up with as the design name. It's just kind of a placeholder, I guess. But uh, this test knit, unfortunately, was put on hold. And to my knowledge, it has never you know, being called again. I don't believe that this pattern has been published, but <laughs> I still had access to that pattern and I had the yarn for it and I had already started it. So I was very interested in finishing it because since the pattern test had been on hold, I just kind of threw it in a corner and I completely forgot about it until I was cleaning out some of my yarn stuff, trying to fit more yarn in there because I had acquired quite a bit uh, from my trip to Spain and I was trying to find a place for it. But I came across this pattern and I was like, I really want to finish that. And then the opportunity came whenever I went to North Carolina over Thanksgiving because my boyfriend was playing in a chess tournament there. So I had four days to work on this sweater and I actually made a different video for that one. I challenged myself to knit the sweater in a total of four days, but I'll leave it at that so you can go watch that video. It will be the next one after this podcast episode airs, and I'm really excited for that one. It was a lot of fun to film. Um, I don't really do, or I haven't really done vlog style videos before, but that's what that one is, and I had a lot of fun with it. It's kind of a pain to edit, to be completely honest, because there's so much footage to go through, but I'm very happy with the end result, and I'll let you watch that video to see if I actually completed it within those four days. But anyway, this pattern is a yoke style sweater. It is top down. This is the second time I knit a yoke style sweater, and I must say, this time it went a lot smoother. Even though the yarn was much, um, was much smaller, and it definitely took a lot more stitches to knit. I had a fantastic time knitting this one. Um, what really drew me to this pattern and the pattern test was that it had stripes. I'm just drawn to stripes. I think they're very classic, but also this simple color work. 
I had done color work on a pair of socks before, but I was intrigued to try it out on a sweater. And since she was still looking for some, you know, uh, I guess testers, I was like, yes, yes, please, let me let me try that. Now, I'm not 100% happy with the way I knit the stripes and the color work together. Um, I can kind of show you what I mean on the sleeve. And whenever I showed you the back, I'm sure you could see there's like a jog, like the lines kind of jog, um, but you can definitely see right here. Um, I did my best and I looked at a lot of tutorials on how to avoid this, but it was so hard. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I obviously did not do it right. Uh, but essentially when you're knitting in the round, since this is knit in the round, um, you're knitting in a spiral. Your rounds are not like 100% equal. I still have a lot to learn and sometimes I think that it worked out well. Uh, like the uh, gray stripe, you can't really tell where I started and stopped the round. I think that I did it better on that one. But the color work portion where I had a lot of, you know, colors going on, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just didn't uh, quite get that right but I am still happy with the way that it looks. And with the sleeves, at least it's like on the inside seam, so you don't really see that. And then I have long hair, so it covers it in the back, but it also helps whenever I put the sweater on, I can visually see which one's the back side um, because I obviously don't want that seam going down the front. Uh, but yeah, um, I did learn a lot on this uh, sweater. And whenever I did the color work, I remember the first time whenever I was knitting that other sweater, maybe I'll show it in a different episode because it's kind of funny now to me and it was definitely not the, the best sweater I ever knit. But anyway, um, on that one, I remember with it only had two colors and they got so intertwined that I had to stop and unwind it constantly. It was so bad and so I, New for this sweater, I did not want to have to fight three different strands of yarn and it was actually six because I had to hold this yarn together double stranded since, um, you know, one strand alone was, I, I wouldn't meet gauge, it was too thin. So I held two strands together. So technically I was holding like six strands at one time uh, whenever I was doing the color work and that just would have been a nightmare if all of them were intertwined. So I did find a way that I really liked, I could keep the, uh, balls separated and because usually I was only working with two different colors at once So I just had one skein of yarn on each side and then I'm a continental knitter So I hold the yarn in my left hand as I knit so I would have You know one color in my left hand and then the other one I would have off to the side like off to the right and I would just let that strand hang loose and every time I would need it I would just uh, put the needle in to the stitch and then I pick up that yarn piece or the yarn strand of the other color that I needed and then I would knit the stitch. And then I, I kind of just did that. I would just drop it and then pick it back up whenever I needed it. And that really worked for me. I thought that it might slow me down a little bit, but it really didn't. I think that once I got the hang of it, I could go pretty fast. Well, pretty fast. I just wasn't extremely slow like I thought. I'm not a really fast knitter by any means, but. It did work, so I was happy that I found a technique for that. Also, um, I guess since I already talked about one mistake, um, I would, or at least something that I would change. It wasn't a mistake by any means. I was following the pattern, and I think that I learned um, on the short rows on the sweater, I don't think I added enough of them. Uh, so whenever you do short rows, you're basically adding fabric especially like on a sweater, you're adding fabric to the back so that it sits up higher than the front of the neck because whenever you put the sweater on, you don't want it to choke you. So by having more fabric in the back, it kind of holds that, um, like the collar up while uh, the front side of the collar, since it's not as high, it doesn't have as much fabric there, it sits lower. So it just is for more comfort and it doesn't choke you whenever you wear the sweater. Um, I added as many as she called for in the pattern, 
And I'm not unhappy with that by any means, but I do notice as I wear it throughout the day, it does ride up a little bit. Uh, you can kind of see it now. Um, it is starting to like fold in on itself. And maybe that's because of the way that I cast on. I'm not really 100% sure, but I do notice that I pull it down a little bit. So maybe next time if I make this sweater again, I would add a few more short rows in the back uh, compared to what I did. And again, it wasn't anything about how it was written it, because she did mention that you could add more if you needed to, but um, I just stopped at the minimum <laughs> and uh, just kept going. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I've already worn it a lot. I wore it once this week, so two times already this week, and I just really like it. It is warm. I made it with 100% acrylic. It was a yarn by Yarn Bee. It's called Soft and Sleek DK. And I had used that yarn before in a sweater that I gifted my sister two Christmases ago. And I was really impressed with it. I liked the way that it felt and it says that it's a low pill fiber. Um, unfortunately, I think my sleeves are gonna pill quite a bit because I can already see it. Uh, maybe the rest of the sweater will hold up to the pilling. But um, this was really the yarn that I could get my hands on for the test knit. I'm happy with the yarn choice and I really like the way that it turned out. Oh, and one other thing that I would like to say about this is um, I was afraid of picking up the stitches for the armholes because whenever you knit a yoke style, you knit the yoke and then you split for the sleeves and you keep going and you knit in like a tube, like in the round so you can finish the body. And again, one of my mistakes on the first yoke sweater that I ever knit, it was um, the sleeves, it was picking up. I didn't know how to do it correctly. And I had so many holes in the arm, well not so many, I had one giant hole in the armpit on both sides. But since I have knit a lot of socks, I am pretty confident in picking up stitches now. And I didn't have any holes that I had to go back with. And um, the way that I picked them up, I think that it looks very nice and clean and smooth. So I'm very happy with that. So sock knitting really helped with this sweater, which I didn't really expect, but. I think that's all I have to say about this sweater. I really liked it. And yeah, if you'd like to watch the challenge that I put on myself to knit this sweater, then I'll link it for you whenever it's available so that you can go watch it. Uh, but that brings us to the end of finished objects. That's the only one that I have completed, but I do have a couple of work in progress or whips. So we can go through that next. Um, this one I'll go through. Um, it's a sock. Like I told you, if you haven't been here before, I do like to knit socks a lot. This is the sock that I have started. It's a self-drafted pattern, I guess, even though there's no draft. I don't know. I just am making it up as I go along. I like the three by one rib. I just like the way that it looks. So I started with that on the cuff. And I am using the nine inch circular needles that I purchased a couple years ago for a test knit actually for uh, Pinrose Knits um, for Laura. She, it was the Cornicet socks and those were color work socks. That was the first experience I actually had with color work knit socks. And I enjoyed the whole process and I got the nine inch circulars because I thought that it would make the um, the color work easier. I had read and watched some videos that that would help. Um, but typically I like to use um, the magic loop method now. I loved DPNs whenever I first started and I still like them, but I think I'm definitely a magic circle knitter or is that what it's called? Yeah, magic circle knittle, knitter. <laughs> I can't speak. The needles that I used for that were occupied. And honestly, I can't find them now. I was looking for them the other day and I don't know where I put them. Um, so I decided to try out the nine inch circulars again. I thought that they would hurt my hands because uh, my hands cramp sometimes whenever I knit too much. Um, just for, I think I'm a tight knitter. So holding my hands like this in this position just isn't good sometimes. And I forget and I just knit for a long time. 
and then my hands are cramping. So I thought that that would happen with these, but it really didn't. And also, I started this, I think I cast on six, 64 or 62 stitches, I think, which I think I used for socks for myself on a previous pair of socks. But these seem way too big. I think they're gonna be too big for me. So I tried it on my boyfriend and I think that these should fit his legs. Uh, so it turned out, you know, not for me. It'll be for him, which he'll be happy. He's always begging me to knit him something. And he really likes the knit socks that I made for him before. Um, and then another interesting thing is these circular needles the needles, I can't remember exactly what size, let me see. These are two and a half millimeter. Usually I use like a 2.25 millimeter needle. Neat, I can't say knitting needles. Oh my goodness, I keep trying to combine those words. So I thought since these are bigger, I thought that the stitches would be bigger, but somehow I have super, super tight stitches. So it's very close together and that's not exactly what I had expected. I'm happy with it, by, by all means, I'm happy with it. I think that that's really good quality of the socks, uh, but it surprised me. I thought that I would have bigger stitches with the bigger needle size. I am testing out the heel flap and gusset method with the nine inch circulars. That's not something I have ever done before. So that's a little bit interesting. Um, I have started the heel stitches, like that heel flap, I'm doing the knit one, slip one um, in this pattern. And then on the purl side, you just purl all the way across and then you start over with the knit one, slip one. And I really like the way that it looks, but I think it'll give a nice cushiony heel. And I've seen socks like this. I really do like the look of it. So I'm excited for that to see how it turns out. And, but yeah. Uh, this is how far I've gone on this sock. I've only started this one. I'm using the Pat and Croy sock yarn. Again, this is like the only sock yarn that I can really find in stores near me, but I really like it. Uh, this is the 50s stripes colorway. I don't know if you can read that. It's a little small, but I really like the Pat and Croy sock yarn because it is 100% superwash wool or not 100%, I'm sorry. It is 75% wool and it has 25% nylon. I knew that, I don't know why I said it, it was 100% wool. Uh, but anyway, it's mostly wool and then it has nylon to help strengthen it. But what I really like about this yarn is, especially whenever you are beginning, um, this yarn is very um, sticky, I'm gonna say, because the fibers just stick together, which is great because since these, you can already see it happening, um, these stitches are about to fall off the needle and I keep these in a bag most of the time and whenever I actually pulled it out for this podcast episode um, a few of the stitches had fallen off but what's great is the stitches just hold um, hold their shape they don't actually pull through unless you were to pull the strand of yarn so if you're looking into getting or if you're looking at getting into knitting socks, if you've ever been curious about it. Um, maybe start with the Patton's Croy. I've been very impressed. I have a lot of socks knit out of these. They also, you can wash them in the washing machine and dry them and they last. Since I, I talk about socks all the time on my podcast because usually those are the only projects that I have going on. But this time I have a different project that I'm really excited about and I was working on it this morning. So it's in my bag right here. But this is the start to a sweater and it's my first one. I wanted to knit, I guess, first off, uh, this new year is now 2023 and it's February. I realize it's a couple months in already, but I wanted to try different patterns that weren't just socks because I knit socks all the time. So I wanted to try to incorporate a few other projects and Petite Knit is so popular and I think there, there's a reason why. Um, she just has this nice aesthetic. I'm not the only one because there are thousands of people that have, um, you know, done projects by her. So 
I thought what better time than to try one now. So this is the balloon sweater. This is the pattern that I am following. Uh, but it has this really nice turtleneck. It's got a nice ribbed turtleneck. And I am so impressed by this cast on. It is so beautiful. Like the way that it starts, it uses the Italian cast on. And it just gives it this store-bought look. It doesn't look... I used a regular cast on for this one, which I think the yarn is too... I think the yarn is too dark for me to really show you. But the way that the this neckline looks like from the very top it like the tops of your stitches are v's whenever you're knitting and whenever you're casting on and that's what it looks like you just see v's all the way across the top and then you get into the uh the ribbing part where it's like vertical but your stitches are horizontal whenever you cast on but on this one it just looks like it folds over like the stitches just continue like up and then down like on the other side it's really cool technique and i think it's beautiful it took me several tries honestly to kind of figure out what i was doing and really get into the rhythm of it but you know watching a few videos and trying to knit along doing it on like a small little piece was so so helpful but again i did have a little bit of a hard time starting it but once i got it there it was good and then, um, I, once I got that done, then you start the, um, the body of the sweater. And I did rip this out, um, twice. So I started it three different times and, or maybe it was only two times because I thought that I had, um, increased too many stitches. So I thought that I had too many. So I was trying to rip out some of those stitches. And then I realized that I actually didn't, I still needed to go, but I had already ripped back too much and I didn't have a lifeline. I didn't put, you know, like a cable in and I got it completely out of whack. Uh, some of the stitches had dropped, I think. <laughs> and yeah, so I just ended up, I knew where I was like on the neckline because there were already some stitches on hold. So I just went back to like the first or like the last two rows of the neckline and I just put a little lifeline in so I just went with my knitting needle and I picked up those stitches and then I ripped back to that portion so I did restart this twice um, on because I thought that I had made a mistake and then I realized I didn't but at that point I had actually made a mistake so I had to correct it but anyway um, this is you know it just happens on some projects uh, which is okay that's how you learn things and I really like this nice shoulder detailing I think you can see uh, but it just it, it adds something to such a um, I want to say simple but I think it's just like a classic looking sweater it just adds a nice detail and it is on both shoulders so it looks kind of funny the way that it's shaped right now uh, but I really like it and the yarn I am using I need to get out which it's in here so I'll show you in a minute maybe I'll show you in a minute because it's a Sorella yarn and it's beautiful I love it it's a hand dyed yarn if you're not familiar with Sorella which again I'll talk about it in the acquisitions that's what's in this box but She's a hand dyer and I'm using that yarn here. I'm holding the sock weight or like fingering weight yarn. So I think it's a classic sock base, uh, but it's 100% superwash wool. And I'm holding that with a strand of mohair. Sorry, my camera thinks that I have been filming for far too long and it decided to stop. So I had to start it again. <laughs> so I kind of lost my train of thought, but I think I was gonna show you what the yarn looks like. Um, but since, yeah, it's in, the hanks are in here and I'll get to that in just a moment because I'd like to show you everything that I purchased. But um, I'll show you what it looks like all balled up. Um, I hand wound this into balls and this is what it looks like. And I think it is so gorgeous. 
It's very soft, both are very soft, and this is the first time I've ever worked with mohair. And whenever I was winding it, I was kind of afraid that it would like tangle and intertwine into itself because I've heard that that can happen. And maybe it's just whenever you're knitting and you like pull things out, like you rip things out, it's really difficult. I haven't necessarily had that experience yet. <laughs> so I, I hope that I won't, but I have been very impressed. Um, it's very soft, but whenever I tried it on with the turtleneck, I'm kind of afraid it's gonna make my neck itch, but I think I'll force myself to wear it and I think that I'll get used to it uh, because it is actually very soft. Uh, but this is the yarn that I'm using and I think the colorway is called Waverly Place. And yes, it's beautiful. I love it. Like I said, first time knitting with mohair, first time knitting a petite knit pattern, and yeah, first time just knitting a sweater with this construction. So I'm really excited. It's a big learning experience for me and I can't wait to have another sweater to wear. Uh, hopefully this will just fly off the needles and maybe in the next episode I can be wearing it in that one. Uh, I do definitely want to finish this one before winter is over so that I can wear it because um, I could use another sweater in my closet. Uh, but that's the last whip that I have uh, for this episode that I can share with you guys. Before we get into the acquisition portion of this video, I want to take a moment to thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have enjoyed it so far, or if you've learned something, if you like a project, um, please let me know, hit the like button, that really helps out the channel. But also, more than anything, I love to talk about knitting and crochet, so please leave your comments below. That's really how we can make this a two-way conversation, and I love talking about it, so it'd be even better if I could chat about it with you guys. Also, I have a request. There's this pattern, it's actually right behind me, and if you've watched any of my videos before, you might have seen this, but I'll give you a better view of it. But this design is called the Knot Knot Shelf. It is a crochet pattern, and I'm looking for testers. That's really the last stage of this pattern design. I need to have it tested before I can release this pattern, but I would really love to release it in the springtime sometime. So if you are interested in testing out this pattern, I have a link in the description box below where it'll take you to my website where there is more information on this pattern test, how you can sign up and all of that jazz. So please check that out if you are interested. Anyway, we can get on with the video. I have quite a few yarn acquisitions, but also maybe a few other things. <laughs> If you have noticed this cute little pig, I picked this one up in Mexico because my boyfriend is actually from Mexico and I went there for Christmas with him uh, so I could meet his family. And wow, it was cool. I had a blast. He's from the South and the day that I left, his sister gifted this little purse to me and it was handmade. So I had to show it in this. I just think it's adorable and it's really funny that it was a pig because uh, she's had this for like a year or something. But we have this ongoing joke with my grandpa about pigs. So it was the perfect gift for her to give me and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, but it opens, so it's a little purse and you can use it uh, with a little handle. But it's just adorable. So I had to show that one off. I just think it's really cute. I didn't make it, uh, but I just had to show off the craftsmanship. I have some yarn to show you from Mexico, but first I'd like to show you these gloves that I picked up because I have been wanting a pair of knit gloves, but I just haven't had the time to make them. And uh, my boyfriend and I had gone to Excurate and we had spent the day there and we actually found this little spot where they had wool and I think that they had like a weaving class or something. And unfortunately, we did not know that that existed because you could do some, like, uh, what are they called? Uh, workshops, but we learned about it a little bit too late, so we didn't get to go, but we did find the, um, sorry, there's something in it. We did find the little shop, I guess, because you could purchase 
some hand knit things and I found this pair of gloves and my boyfriend got a hat which I forgot to pick up to show you but maybe in another episode I'm really happy that I have a new pair of gloves they are warm and they came from Mexico of all places I forgot I have one more thing from Mexico that is not yarn I do have yarn still but it's this bag that I think is just adorable it's made from 100% Anakin how do you say that Anakin um, and I don't remember what this fiber was made from but they used to make I believe it was sails for ships and they just like weave it together you can kind of see they weave it together and this was handmade as well but they uh, weave it together and it creates this super strong fiber and they had a lot of hats made out of it that were very flexible and they seemed very comfortable but we had already purchased hats at that point so we didn't do that but I did want something and so I bought this little handbag I think it's really cute and it also has a zipper and a cloth lining so it's pretty spacious inside it does have a little pocket here uh, but yeah I think it's a very cute handbag I don't have anything like this and I love that it's made out of 100% natural fiber and this was a very practical find and I just had to show you guys because it kind of fits in with the knitting crochet content uh, but this was actually uh, woven with a different fabric and it's pretty soft and but it's scratchy at the same time it's kind of like straw but it's more flexible but yeah this was from uh, Merida Yucatan those were pretty much the things that I found or was gifted in Mexico that is not yarn I do have some yarn but I think for the yarn portion I'll show you in chronological order of the way that I acquired it. Uh, the first set of yarn came from a friend that I met through my boyfriend. Um, she lives with her husband in Peru and her husband and my boyfriend are very good friends. Whenever I went to Spain actually uh, they were there and I met her for the second time and I was knitting socks and I had bought so much yarn my boyfriend kept telling them about it and so I showed them everything that I purchased and she was like wow I didn't know that you did that and her mom come to find out actually crochets and she's made her a few things uh, she showed me this uh, fuzzy scarf that was super adorable that she is just in love with and so whenever she went home to Peru she ended up purchasing me some yarn and she sent some over and I'm really happy it was very kind of her to do so thank you so much um, if you ever watch this probably not but if you do thank you so much for the yarn and I should have taken this out of the package but she sent this to me it's five different skeins of yarn uh, one of them uh, I'll just show you. Again, sorry for the crinkles. I didn't think that one through. But um, this one, I think they're all, yeah, I look, they're all 100% acrylic yarn. This one is like baby soft, like buttery soft. Um, I actually think that Lion Brand has a brand of yarn that's called uh, Feels Like Butter. I think that's kind of what it reminds me of uh, but this one is called Sylvia Wawita Wawita sorry um, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the colorways but it's this beautiful little baby blue so soft this feels it looks more like a fingering kind of white yarn I don't oh it says uh, number three so maybe it's closer to DK weight uh, this one was definitely on the chunky side beautiful blue color beautiful navy blue color and this one is Sylvia Polar and these are all brands made in Peru I believe yes you can see it on the label here that says Peru she also gifted me this beautiful reddish pink color and 
this one is Perlita Domino. And then I think the rest of these, yeah, the other two are also the same brand, Perlita. It's in this fun pink color and then this uh, cute little yellow color. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to make with these yet. Uh, pretty much with all of this yarn. I do have some ideas, but I need to figure out some, you know, other crochet or knit ideas for these. If you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. Or if you would be interested in a separate video where I go through all of my yarn acquisitions and I kind of uh, plan out different projects for them, um, that would be useful for me. But I don't know if it would be of interest to you, so please let me know your ideas on that. Uh, because I do have quite a bit of yarn, as you will see. So next up, what I got, um, I actually ordered this yarn well before my friend gifted this to me and she sent it to me. Um, but I think I received this one before I received this one because this was a collection in uh, collaboration with Ashley from Sorella Yarn and Alexi from Two of Wands. They collabed on this one and they came up with the greatest colorways. <laughs> I was so excited about this collection. I was waiting, I don't know why, to purchase yarn from Sorella. I have been following her for such a long time when she used to die in her kitchen and then she moved into her garage. Now she actually has like a studio where she dies. She has a lot of people that work for her as well. Like she has grown so much and obviously her packaging is adorable. Who can pass up that? But uh, she has grown a lot and I have really enjoyed uh, watching that or watching her expand and grow in the yarn community and all of the yarns that she comes up with are beautiful. And it seems like each collection she just tops herself. Like, I don't know how she does it, but very creative and they come up with a lot of great yarns. So whenever this collab was introduced and they were, you know, showing off everything, all the colorways, all that, I just got so excited. And so I had to purchase some. My first So Rally Yarn purchase ever and I'm not sponsored by any means, just a fan, and yeah. I think her packaging is so cute. Look at this box, it's so much fun. You open it and it just gives you like this whole experience, I just love it. And then whenever you open the box, you have this beautiful yarn mail. <laughs> I actually made a, an unboxing video for this, which was pretty fun to film, um, but yeah. Uh, so you get a little thank you card, and they have the cutest little graphics. There's a little uh, caricature is what I'm gonna say of Ashley. Uh, just the brains and you know, the creative behind this wonderful company. Um, but I will first show you, this is Waverly Place and this is the classic sock base. And this is what I'm using in the balloon sweater by Petite Knit. Uh, so that's what the classic sock yarn looks like in a hank. This still this beautiful purpley color. And then this is what the mohair looks like before it's, um, you know, wound up into a ball. So those are Waverly Place. And this collection was all, you know, Alexi. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she lives in New York. So all of these colorways were based on places um, or things in New York, so keep that in mind. Um, I also bought a sweater's worth of this one, which is called Soho. And this is also classic wool, classic sock, which is 100% superwash wool. I had hopes to also make a sweater out of this one since I bought so much of it. I think I might want to pair this with another mohair, but I might see how well or how much I wear the other sweater with the mohair, uh, just to see if it actually will make me itch or not. I'm not, yeah. I need to figure that one out to see if how sensitive my skin is, because maybe I, I won't pair it with anything. I haven't decided yet, obviously, but this one will probably be turned into a sweater because I bought quite a bit of it. Um, and then the rest of it is sock yarn, because 
as you know, or as I state, I love socks. So, I bought one sock set, and this one is called Newsprint, which is so fitting. Just look at the speckles on this one. And then they paired it with, uh, I don't remember what this colorway was, but uh, I think you could buy them both separately. But for this one, I just wanted to get a sock set because I thought my boyfriend would like a pair of socks. Um, I thought he would like this colorway. So I thought of him whenever I purchased this one. Also, I wanted to try out this cashmere sock. It's 80-10-10, so it's wool, cashmere, and nylon. So I thought this colorway, it's called Sweater Weather. It's this beautiful orangey color, orangey brown kind of color. It's super, super soft. And yeah, I think a pair of socks would be fantastic made out of this. So that might be going to myself. <laughs> I don't know. And then um, I bought these two. I think you could buy them in a sock set as well, but I decided that I liked it and I honestly thought of my sister at first uh, for a pair of socks because I thought of making everybody socks or something handmade for Christmas. Um, that didn't happen this year, so maybe next year. I'm not 100% certain, but I thought that these colors would suit her. She does like this, um, you know, pale kind of pink, but I liked it enough for myself as well so I figured I would just get two skeins rather than one sock set so that I could get maybe a couple pairs of socks out of it uh, so this one is called Nolita that's the colorway on this one and it's just this beautiful variegated creamy pink ballerina-esque colors which I really love and then this one I love this pink I'm not a huge pink person but this kind of pink I can handle and this one's called Theater. So they're all uh, just basic sock yarns. This one's Superwash Merino Wool with Nylon. So it's an 80-20 blend. Uh, but yeah, I just really love those colors together. So those are definitely gonna be socks. And then everybody raves on Instagram about her wool wash and how fantastic it is and they Recommended this one, or she talked about it. I think this was her favorite one, um, and her husband really liked it. Um, so I decided to purchase this wool wash by Sorella, and it's called Brooklyn. That's the scent, and it smells lovely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I forgot that I actually had this. So the last, like, whenever I blocked the sweater, actually, I forgot to use it. So. Next time I wash it, I'll have to use this uh, wool wash because it smells amazing. Uh, but honestly, everything has just lived in this box uh, since I got it, except for the yarn that I'm using for that sweater because I forget because it's all back boxed up and it's in this beautiful package. Uh, but that was, like I said, my first Sorella yarn purchase and I'm just so happy with it so far. Next up is all of the yarn that I came back with from Mexico. <laughs> so the place Excret is like the same little shop that I got these gloves. I, they also had this wall of wool just hanging and they were all different colors and I believe I snapped a photo of it. So I'll put one up here um, if I can find it. But they had all of this wool and I asked if it was available for purchase and for whatever reason they kept saying no and it sounded like it takes a long, for, long time for them to import it because the wool comes from the north of Mexico because that's where um, I guess the wool is because you don't really find it in the south of Mexico. So they do have to import it or send it and it does take a long time. So they weren't willing to give that up, but for the workshop, they did have some yarns and he let me go through it and very kind. Um, I did find these two and these were 100% wool and I thought that, hey, you know, if, if that's all I can get, I will take it because I wanted a little souvenir from Mexico and this was like at the very beginning of the trip and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to stop by a yarn store if we'd have time if we'd even be able to find one 
So I went with it and I was like, thank you so much. It's not a ton. I need to weigh them, but it's not a ton of yarn. So I'm not really 100% sure what I could use this for, but I'm just happy that I have it. It makes me happy and it's a souvenir from Mexico. So it's this beautiful gray color and then this little off-white uh, creamy kind of color. So happy that I got these. Um, that was the first yarn that I found in Mexico. Next up, I found, um, I don't know if you have ever been to Mexico, but there are people selling things everywhere and they have like these markets set up. And my boyfriend and I were on our way back um, like to leave, but we were in Merida at the time. And so we stopped by the market there and I found cotton yarn and I'm really happy. I actually just bought a cone of cotton yarn from Spain and I brought it back with me, but I found this in Mexico and it's a hundred percent cotton. Um, I don't really know the weight of it. Uh, probably, I think it's maybe, I think it's a little thicker than worsted maybe. Uh, but I thought maybe another wall hanging like this one, <laughs> maybe not the exact same, but maybe another wall hanging. That's what I was thinking. And then I also found it in this black color. So maybe I can do a two colored kind of wall hanging or something. That's kind of what I was thinking with this yarn. So I'm happy that I found that. And then I found, and my battery's flashing at me. I'm gonna try to finish. I also found this 100% cotton yarn. It's Nilo, never heard of it before, but 100% cotton. I love this gray color. It's a 30% linen, 60% cotton, and 10% something that I don't know what that means. Uh, but I think I said 100% cotton earlier. That's not true. Obviously it has a cotton and linen blend and I'm hoping to maybe make a dress or something crocheted out of this because uh, it is a very thin weight yarn. Then I also found 100% cotton and this green color, it's Anne. And this one is made in Brazil. Honestly, <laughs> this color, like you had to pick it through a chart and they kind of had the strands there but I, I thought that this green was not as bright as it was. And when she brought it to me, it, I felt bad because it had taken a while for her to go get it. And I didn't want to be like, I don't want it. And so my boyfriend was like, ah, it looks fine. Just get it. So I got it. I'm not 100% happy, but maybe it will look a little bit better whenever I crochet it into something. Because I am wanting to maybe crochet, like I said, a top a skirt, a something, I don't know. But if you have any ideas or pattern recommendations, I'll take them, <laughs> please let me know. That was such a long episode, way longer than I had really anticipated, but it has been such a joy to just talk about knitting and yarn and crochet and all that, all those things. I have just had a blast talking to you about it and I hope that you have been inspired to go work on your own projects and I hope that you have been working on a project as you watch this. I want to thank you so much for joining me and again if you are interested in the pattern test for this little shelf here please 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 hit that link in the description box below it'll take you to my website where I have a lot more information about that pattern and how you can sign up to test it. I would love to have you on board, so please do so if you are interested. And I think I will end it here. I'm a little bit hungry and the sun is starting to go down, so I'm gonna lose my daylight pretty soon. I hope you have a good rest of your day and thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Soul Homie Podcast. I am thrilled that you spent some time with me and please let me know what you what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd love to chat with you there and happy knitting, happy crochet, and I'll see you guys in the next video.